Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm Eric Worrell here with Rent Prep, and we're doing another live video. How's it going? Woo! I'm We're live. I mean, if I'm alive, and I'm live, so I don't know if that counts for two, but I'm I just realized good. I told you before we are going live, too. I was like, I'm going to do a countdown, and then I just completely blanked out, and then we just went live, so that was my fault. Well, yeah, I was. Yeah, that that's good. I wasn't, you know, doing something inappropriate. So no, I'm I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. I love I love real estate. I love you guys. I, I'm, it's an honor. So thanks for having me. Yeah, Mark, we love having you on. I know our audience loves having you on. We already have a ton of questions that have been asked uh, for everyone who doesn't know. So, Mark, I, and I know I always butcher your intro because there's a lot to say, but oh. so I'm going to read it off a little bit here. You're yeah, a best selling author. You're good. <laughs> best selling author multiple times, national speaker, radio show host, writer, and video personality. If you haven't subscribed to Mark's YouTube channel, I highly suggest it. It's awesome. Uh, and then also your video personality and entrepreneur.com and your partner in a CPA and law firm. So when it comes to mm. landlords, real estate, all that, you're the guy. Well, thank you. And I am trying to be the guy. I'm trying. And I own real estate myself. And in fact, tonight on my agenda is to stop up my son's little rehab fixer upper that's going to be a threeplex here by the by the time we hit summer. So I'll be uh, sanding some drywall and taping and mudding. And yeah, so I'm doing, you know, it sounds crazy, but you know, you get a machine going, Get a lot gun. Uh, not to get personal, is your son house hacking? Is he going to live it and rent out two, or is he just using it for investment? He's going to rent it out three. He's got a partner that came in with their IRA uh, oh. that bought that, that paid for the purchase and the rehab of cost with their IRA, and then uh, Dylan's the twenty percent part. I don't mind sharing this because yeah, I talk about it all the time. He's the twenty percent partner doing the work and getting paid a minimal amount per hour for labor and just managing the project. So he's in college. It's a great experience for him. I got a client that's going to make 20, 30% on their IRA. Mm -hmm. We might strip the equity out and rent it or flip it. We'll see, but it's, it's coming together. I think that's really cool because like, I've just learned about being able to buy real estate inside of an IRA or a self-directed IRA from you in the last few years. And he's actually doing it in college. So that's an incredible experience to already be on. So I wish it was uh, his IRA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's. <laughs> so before we get into the live questions, we're, we're going to work through. If you guys have any questions as you're watching this, feel free to ask. We get to as many as we possibly can here. Um, I asked Mark beforehand uh, if you could kind of go through a, kind of a state of the state, any kind of updates you can think of that you think from a tax or legal perspective that might be pertinent to landlords and real estate investors. You bet. I was thinking of just tweeting it out. Uh, like our president, but no, I'll, I'll actually verbally throw it down here. So we're ready to go. <laughs> um, all right. So the tax cuts and jobs act, and I don't mean to be political. I'm love them or hate them. There's some good tax things going on so, and, and that's okay. So I want to hit those items. Uh, so here's what you should be thinking about as you're prepping your 2018 return. Many of you that are real estate professionals, you're going to extend 60 to 70% of our clients extend because they have more complex returns, which I know is much of your audience Eric. Mm. And so we have to keep in mind that, um, Extending also reduces your chances of an audit, which we uh, taught for years and statistics show that. So don't stress about extending. So this Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is effective for 2018, 2019, and then it, different pieces and parts start to phase out between now and 2024, right? Here's two or three things you need to be aware of. The 199A 20% pass-through deduction also applies to rental real estate income. Many of you should know that already if you've been following the news, but it's a lot of noise. And so that part may have not resonated with some of you. 20% of your profit is now a tax deduction. Is that crazy? So that's a big deal, but it includes, you have to take all of your sources of entrepreneurial income. Your W-2 has nothing to do with this, but if you have an S corp with a K-1 an LLC or a few LLCs with K-1s, all that is blended together into this, what's called QBI qualified business income. And then you get a 20% deduction. Now, I, that's enough said. I've got some little videos on that and articles. You you know, we could spend three hours going through that, but you should be aware of it. You should know what it means and be able to have an intelligent conversation with your tax advisor and they better not look like deer in headlights when you bring it up. If you watch one of my videos and know more than them, you got the wrong advisor. So that's number one. Okay. Uh, and I'll mention too, before we go to the next point, uh, Mark, you had mentioned your uh, YouTube video and your website uh, in the copy of this uh, post here. You can find, if you click see more, uh, markjkohler.com, you can get, it's like the hub for all of your resources, right? 
Yes, sir. And well, I'm going to give away some books today too. We'll get, we'll get to that. Um, for the, we've got some giveaways for all of you that can make it through this talking taxes, but I promise you, we're going to save you thousands. Uh, this is the, this is the yang, you know, there's yin and the yang. The yin is, Oh, we're going to make money. And everybody wants to talk about Tony Robbins and we're making money or Robert Kiyosaki or some, you know, making money deal. I'm the yang. I'm the saving the money. I want to make you guys money by saving you money. That's the, that's the other side of the coin. So anyway, we've got some books for you too, but markjkohler.com. You can sign up for my newsletter and, uh, and other things, a lot of very affordable material. We'll talk more about maybe some workshops this fall that you might be interested in. And then my YouTube channel has a ton of vids that are just obviously free and you'll love those. All right. Okay. Tip number two, something to be aware of big changes. In Chinese uh, culture this year, it's the year of the pig. I'm telling you, in the in, in the U.S., it's the year of the auto. The, <laughs> the auto deduction has never been better. It is unbelievable. In almost 40 years since the since the 1980s uh, Tax Reform Act through Reagan, I mean, this is unbelievable. If you are a business owner, you should be getting a lot more bang for your buck with the highest mileage rate per mile. It's 58 cents this year or the bonus depreciation of buying a new or used car. And, and then the SUV and trucks are 100%. I mean, this is insane. So if you ha aren't, again, having a conversation with your advisor about your vehicle deductions, get on it. All right. Number three, cost segregation. And I know you guys get sick of talking about it as real estate professionals, but I'll just say this. I just released a video yesterday titled The Truth About Cost Segregation. Uh, Everybody likes to talk about, oh, I'm doing bonus depreciation. I'm doing a cost seg and I'm going to save a bunch in taxes. But there's two or three poison pills you got to be aware of. So if you get to YouTube and just type Kohler cost segregation, you're going to see in a really a 13 to 15 minute video on where I break down the good, the bad and the ugly of cost segregation. And I'm shooting part two, maybe later today if I can get over to the studio. And part two has an amazing charitable remainder trust solution. It's kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, get over to cost seg because it's a hundred percent bonus of depreciation on your buildings. If you do a cost seg. Okay. That's and you guys talk about that all the time, probably. Right. You know what? I'm kind of sitting here and I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I'll be the guy. <laughs> Cause I'm sure we got people watching that are like, I don't know what that is either. So I'll, I'll play the dummy, even though it's right. real life. This will take 20, 30 seconds. Yeah, go for a it. Cost seg is if you take a building, you got a commercial multi-unit, you're going to depreciate it over 39 years. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a million dollar property. The land is to, worth 200 grand, building's worth 800. Let's just assume that'd be generally common. 200 grand allocated land. Do you get to depreciate the land? Mm -hmm. No, you get to depreciate the building. 39 years, well, you've got window treatments, appliances, carpet, sprinkler systems, things that are not going to last 39 years. Anything less than 20-year property is considered personal property. It's a piece of equipment. Under the new Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you can 100% depreciate it in year one. Unlimited. So let's say you take that hundred thousand, that eight hundred thousand dollar building. You do a cost seg analysis. You're going to pay around three grand. I talk about this in my video. You'll pay three to four grand for a cost seg analysis. It has to be done by an engineer or an appraiser. They'll do this seg analysis. Let's right. say that twenty five percent of your building is personal property. That's two hundred grand. You file the cost seg with your tax return for last year or this year. You just got a two hundred thousand dollar write off. Bonus depreciation unlimited on a cost seg on a million dollar building, 200 grand. We talking refund? Anyway, that's a cost seg. Now it sounds sexy. A lot of people talk about it on stage at real estate conferences, but they don't talk about some of the baggage that comes with it. So if that got your you know interest peaked, go watch my YouTube video on it and you'll see and be a, a pay attention. Click the bell and the like or whatever on YouTube. And when I shoot the next video, you'll, you'll get a ping. Yeah. And I don't normally do this. I don't just like pound, like, you know, and be like, oh, you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe. I subscribe to about six YouTube channels. One of them's Mark's. It's awesome. I always learn something from them. So oh, you, thanks, you're, you're all over my YouTube feed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tell my teenagers I'm worth it. You know, I don't, I don't it. <laughs> when I'm just curious when you're talking about the cost egg, uh, is that something that you think, um, with a new administration eventually coming in whenever it might be that that's something that could go away and that's something that somebody might miss out on, or is that time sensitive or no? Okay. Good question. Cost segregation. It's been around for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You could always go in and do a cost seg analysis. If you open up the Wall Street Journal right now, there's cost segregation companies that do analyses. 
that are huge companies. They've been around for years. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I, I presume some of you that own multi-unit projects, you've heard this pitch. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty common and it's been around for years, but you normally would do a 179 election or seven year property or 50. You had all these little schedules that went with it. Tax cuts and job Act, They freaking threw gas on the fire. They said, you do one. We'll give you a hundred percent write off. What? hundred percent. That's, that's the, that's where this, this GOP bill is just insane and why we see a lot of stimulus to the economy right now because real estate professionals are getting the best write-offs they've had in years. If you didn't think it was good, it got better. I got to throw in a sham wow towel too. So it got better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to pull up some questions here. If okay. they don't sound good, we can go to the next one. So we just kind of rapid fire. And stop. Right. I need to tell you the one. Those were three good things. I said oh. cost egg, auto and the tax, the 20% pass through. Mm -hmm. Meals. There's been a few changes in meals. Uh, you it, there used to be 100% food write-offs in your offices or when you brought food out to your work people on site. It's now 50%. So food in the office and food at the work site used to be 100%. It's now 50. Be aware of that. And entertainment expense is gone. So no more going golfing out to a show, a ball game. You can write off the food when you're at Top Golf, but you can't write off the golf. Yeah. So you've got this this bifurcation going on. But anyway, that's where the government giveth, the government taketh away. So there's in, we've got a, a number of other little minor issues, but just be aware of those. Make sure you're up to speed on these things. So you have it again. You're the captain of your own ship, people. So if your first mate, your accountant doesn't know what the freak's going on, throw them over the side and get a new one. All right. All right. Questions. Get, let's do it. Woo. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you have any uh, house hacking legal advice or tax advice for somebody renting to housemates? So like we were just talking about earlier with your son, if he was doing that, he's not, but like somebody's living in one unit, somebody's in the other unit, anything that they should be aware of from a tax and legal perspective. Yeah, that's a boy. Thanks for throwing out a softball to get this warmed up. I appreciate that. I didn't um, even do the countdown for you when we started. Yeah. <laughs> so Jessica, thank you. House hacking. I've never heard it called house hacking. That's kind of interesting, but I call it the, the duplex quandary, the bed and breakfast quandary in Hawaii. It's the Ohana problem because a lot of people rent out a room or a, a little Ohana behind their house. So what happens when you have personal use and business use of your property. It makes asset protection tricky. And I like that Jessica brought this up because I really uh, have a one-on-one -on -one with clients and figure out how long are they going to be there? What's How much equity is in the home? Do they have other rental property? We want to look at their insurance big time because an LLC is going to be tough. See, remember everybody, typically we've set up, an, listen, this is important. Typically we set up an LLC for our rental so that if anything goes wrong, they can't get out of the LLC to get our home. Well, what happens if your home is half of the rental? Well, the LLC does you no good. So we're going to have to really double down on good insurance planning, good uh, lease, make sure your lease agreements are tight, make sure you always have an umbrella policy in that scenario. And I really want to see it, clients use that as a transitionary stage to getting out of there, turning it into a full-time rental and getting their own place, looking at the cash flow opportunities. So um, Jessica, it's tricky. You, you hit the nail on the head. It is tricky. And I do it usually on a case-by-case -case basis with clients to help them get the best protection. And I want to look at all their other assets to see what we're trying to protect. Okay, cool. Uh, we have a good question here. That's going to take up a little bit of the screen. Uh, I'll read this to you. This is from uh, Jillian. I don't know if you can see him as they're coming up on the screen. Can you? Uh, yeah, I can. I saw Jessica throw it up there. I'll okay, cool. So uh, basically Jillian here, it sounds like she's talking about, what is it? The, uh, I can't remember if it's a two by five or three by five rule. You're familiar? Keep going. All right. So she said that she's moved out of a primary rev residence, lived there for oh. at least two years and okay. rent it. My understanding is that you rent it for three years and avoid capital gains. The owner had lived there for two of the past five years. Assuming you claim it as a rental the last three years, do you depreciate the property? What special tax considerations need to be made so you don't mess up and have to pay capital gains? Okay. So Jillian, great question. Uh, let, this is the two out of five year. When you said two by five or three by five, I was like, what are we building? We're framing? What are we doing? Okay. This is a two out of five or three out of five rule for your primary residence. So everybody, okay. I, I always like to kind of get a baseline so everybody were on the same page with this. So what Jillian's talking about is if you live in a home two years 
out of five. I mean, it could be your home one year, you rent it one year, and you're back into it as your primary one year. As long as it's two out of the preceding five years, you can sell it essentially tax free. You can ex uh, exempt 250 grand of gain if you're single, 500 grand of gain if you're married. So I have a lot of clients that move every couple of years from their primary residence to another primary to another primary, and they never pay tax on the sale because they lived in it two out of five years. Okay, now Jillian's saying, all right, that's a pretty cool rule. Why don't I move out and make it a rental for two years, 364 days, and I'll sell it before the fifth year? So I lived in it two out of five years, so I don't pay any capital gain. Uh, well, Jillian, up until 2007, yes, that worked. It was pretty sexy. But IRS and Congress figured that out. They passed a revenue, a revenue ruling and IRS regs that said, uh-uh, you have to bifurcate the gain. So you could still live in it two out of five years, then put your body, you know, move out and put your renter in there for the next three. And so you you lived in it two out of five and you go to sell it. Well, the IRS says how much gain occurred during when you bought it until you moved out and you don't have to pay taxes on that. And then what? how much gain occurred from the day you moved out until the day you sold it. So a lot of times you can get an appraiser to go back and pinpoint a value at that move out date before you made a rental. So you don't have to get an appraisal the day you move out, but you're going to have to come up with a value. And so uh, Jillian, the answer is yes and no. You get to exempt the gain while it was your primary. And then while it's a rental, you do have to pay tax on the gain that occurred during that period. Great question. Okay. Uh, I think this next question, if I know you, I feel like it might fire you up a little bit. Uh, so we'll, we'll go with it. This one's from, yeah, I'll mute from the mic. Laura. She said she's looking into a DST, which I admit I had to look up because I wasn't sure what that is, a Delaware statutory trust uh, to purchase in a 1031 exchange. Are these legit or risky? Okay, well, the, the DSC to me is a deferred sales trust. Um, there are statutory trusts, and Delaware has statutory trusts. I suspect Laura's talking about a deferred sales trust. Um, I stay fired up because I see the word Delaware, and I think yeah. of like LLCs, and Mark's like, no, do not <laughs> do the online Delaware. <laughs> no, stop. Yes, <laughs> I yes. <misread> it. <laughs> and I might, I might use that as a bully pulpit for one point in between questions here, but um, okay. A DST is a deferred sales trust. Are they legal? Yes. Um, there are only a few firms in the country that do them. This is law firms. Uh, you do have to get a lawyer involved. They're very complex. Essentially, it's a way of moving property into a DST. Um, and then you can sell the property on a deferred sale that saves you a lot of taxes over time. They work. What I tell clients is look at the cost benefit analysis. You're really, you're not getting out of tax. You're just delaying it and deferring it. Hence the word deferred, you know, sales trust. So a lot of people think they're pretty darn sexy, but when they really Take away the emotion and look at what am I saving? I'm really getting an interest-free loan from the IRS and I got to pay this lawyer 25 grand or 20 grand. They're not cheap. I generally, my, most of my clients go, oh, well, that's not worth it because the time value of money, all I'm getting is a present value difference on this interest-free loan. Why am I paying this lawyer 30 grand or more to do this? Um, I'm just not a fan. I love 1031 exchanges. Those are cool. That's great. I love the opportunity zones. We could talk about that today if that gets any of your juices flowing. But a DST is something we don't do at this firm. We're not uh, saying they're bad or illegal, but they're expensive. And they are, I guess, risky in some ways. But the this cost-benefit analysis just isn't there, in my opinion. So be okay. careful. Really run the numbers. So I think this next question might uh, segue nice into what we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, this is a question from Alex and he says, holding properties in a trust versus LLC advantages versus disadvantages. I know that you are the guru when it comes to LLCs and everything that landlords should be doing. So is there anything that comes to mind when you read this question? Yes, absolutely. And thank you for that question. Now, everybody take the chip off your shoulder for a minute and let me just give you my take on this. You may not like my answer. First of all, Land trusts and trust to hold property, great. They provide privacy and anonymity. I agree. You may even do some sort of uh, seller carry back 
and do something tricky that way. I get it. But here's the thing. Trusts do not give you asset protection. And they are over. So I have a whole chapter in my book where I quote chapter and verse. And I know it sounds incredible when some guy or gal is up on stage or writing, doing a podcast or saying these trusts are great. We want to believe it. It sounds so great to be true. It's cheaper than an LLC in California at 800 bucks. I don't want an LLC. They're so expensive, so expensive. Guys, they're a form of insurance. Trusts give you privacy. And I love privacy. And I use trusts, but not for asset protection which allows me to at least make this general comment for everybody out there. I'm not the type that sets up an LLC for every rental. We have a, a discounted LLC setup that's just as affordable as LegalZoom, but you work with a real paralegal and you have under everything under one roof. I know it can be expensive to set up and maintain, but you've got to pony up and deal with this. And if you're in California, we're going to try to limit the number of the LLCs as possible. They're the most expensive state in the country for this. But people, listen up. This is the last point on this. If you have an LLC, it's not one sheet of paper. I was on NBC up in Seattle and King 5 just recently talking about the lawsuits of LLCs being pierced with people that have VRBO and Airbnb property. And they're like, why is my LLC not protecting me? Because they have one sheet of paper from LegalZoom. People, that is not an LLC. You should have an operating agreement. You should have minutes. You should have a stock certificates, membership certificates, and a corporate book and seal. And you go, well, you don't have to have that with an LLC in my state. My accountant told me. And I went online and set it up for $50. Okay. When you go to court, is that going to be your answer? Really? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm an atheist. Yeah. You're in the foxhole and the bombs are dropping. Guess who's on their knees praying? So when you go to court, you're going to start putting all that crap together the night before court because you know you should have done it. So don't, you know, you want to say, I don't want to do it now, but you need to do what we call company maintenance. We have a program for 150 bucks in LLC. We do your minutes. We have a 25 point questionnaire. We type them up. We make them look pretty. We maintain your book done. There's companies that they're charging 10 times that are ripoffs. Hmm. Find a balance people either do it yourself or delegate it, but you've got to have an LLC with actual minutes every year, get good insurance. Yes, I have articles and videos on umbrella insurance and a trust where they are, the umbrella insurance is there as a fallback. Land trusts and trusts give you good anonymity, but it's part of, last point, it's part of it. Do I want a, just a camouflage jacket or a bulletproof vest or both? That's when privacy and asset protection comes together. Let's use a trust. Let's use umbrella insurance and let's use an LLC. Let's use all three to give me a stronger private protection structure. There Mark, go. I got to ask the, uh, the camouflage and bulletproof vest reference. Is that yours? Did you, did you hear that somewhere else? No, I made it up. Actually. I have slides for it too. Oh, that's awesome. Is that uh, fun? <laughs> you know what? I, if you guys like analogies, I'm sure your books are filled with them. So uh, one of the things we were talking about earlier, uh, anybody watching this, uh, I decided, you know what people, I don't want a thumbs up. I want a heart for Mark because it almost <laughs> rhymes. If you guys heart this video as it's playing, uh, we're going to be giving away uh, three different books. Mark, if you want to just kind of talk about those real quick and put them up on screen. Okay. And I'm going to hit your questions, people. I'll start talking faster, but there's good stuff here. First, I'll start with my, this is my favorite book. It's actually got four and a half stars on Amazon because people like engineers want hardcore tax cutting advice. I wrote it as a story. It's called what your CPA isn't telling you. Still has great reviews. It's actually my best-selling book, and uh, it's been around for four or five years, and it's a story of a family that meets an accountant, and all these lights go on and off about buying real estate, self-directing. There's good kids, bad kids. Someone dies. I wrote like the modern family, but it's a story. So I trick you into learning about tax strategies. This is a good one. Whoever wins this, it's an easy read, and it's good to give maybe a child, a spouse, a parent that really doesn't get why tax planning is important, and it's a door where you go through this window into a whole new world. So I think you'd like that. We'll give that away. My newest book is The uh, Financial Freedom, Business Owner's Guide to Financial Freedom, where I have a landscape where you go into this landscape of your life and everybody's situation is different. How are you going to build financial security and wealth? And real estate is one of those. So this is the business owner's guide to financial freedom. Fantastic. And a lot of you that have a, more wealth than others, and that's the type of client that works with rent prep. Hey, that's for you. Mark, you know, I'll cut you off. I think that's an important uh, uh, thing that the experienced landlords in this group will say, you're a business owner. You're not a landlord. You're a business owner. Yes. So when people are seeing that title and they're like, well, I'm not a business owner. If you own property, you're a business owner. 
Yes. And you know what's funny? The reason why I titled that The Business Owner's Guide to Financial Freedom. See, there's all these financial freedom books, Tony Robbins and, and Warren Buffett and blah, blah, blah. And they're commenting, but they're they're Wall Street centric. We're going to sell you insurance and stocks, bonds, mutual funds and 401k, da, 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 but they don't talk about self-directing. They don't talk about real estate. Financial advisors have a fiduciary duty, not to you. 95% of them have a duty to their employer, not to you, the client. So they're selling your crap that they get commissions on. This is about you as a business owner. How do you sell your business and your real estate? You'll love it. And then my workbook. This is 99 bucks on Amazon. I'm giving it away because I love rent prep. This is my newest book. It's a workbook, eight steps to start and grow your business. And like Eric said, you guys are business owners. That's a big deal. And so I've got 60 videos in this. You just hold your phone over it and there's these little QR codes and then you watch a video or you listen to a podcast and you fill it out. And there's like 60, 70 QR codes. And so you, as you're reading, you're like, Oh, there's a video on your phone. Oh, and then you turn the page way cool. And you get a business plan, a strat plan and a marketing plan in word that comes with this. And then finally, I was going to show you guys, this is the misery I'm in this weekend. This is due to my publisher this weekend. This is my second edition to the tax and legal playbook. I have to go through this for my publisher of the weekend. This comes out in two months. Second edition, the game has changed under the tax cuts and jobs. Act. So anyway, the game has changed. So this is my book. I'm working on this this weekend. Final review. Anyway, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thanks for everyone who's uh, heart in the uh, video as we're going. David, I just saw that. Victor, uh, Megan, Richard, Rebecca, all sorts. Uh, so we'll get back to some of the okay. questions here. And again, if you guys have questions, we'll do our best uh, to get to them uh, coming up here. So let me find a good one. I feel like uh, Ilya had one uh, that I was looking at. Uh, let's see. This one might be, eh, that's kind of state specific. Sorry. Uh, to, all right. This one's kind of generic, but Let's see what you got here. We'll put you on the spot. What are the top five recommendations to minimize income tax liabilities? Huh. It's funny you bring that up. Right here. This was on my desk last night. This is a little folder of mine carrying around some stuff. Every, twice a year, we take our accounting firm. We have uh, about 10 CPAs and about 50 staff. We are our, our accounting firm's around 60 people strong. We've been around 15 years now, next year. 14 years now. And we take them away for two days, twice a year, once before tax season and once after, after. And I train my team and we all get around whiteboards and we talk and we strategize. And we even have our secretaries in those meetings. We want everybody top to bottom in our accounting firm to know what we teach and what we're behind. And we want to wow our clients with strategies. That's what our accounting firm's about. We should be bringing strategies to you. So here's what I'm sitting. This, this was just in my folder right here. It's funny you bring that up, Eric. These are my top 15 tax strategies that we typed up from our last meeting. And I handed this out to all of my staff. That's This is an internal document only. I've got 15. Now, uh, Lilia, Lil, Lil, Lila, Lia, Elia. Kaplan, she says, give me top five. All right. Uh, number one, I would say, is the S-Corp LLC structure. Many of you need an S-Corporation for ordinary income to save on self-employment tax and the LLC for asset protection. And then the trifecta of your trust at the bottom, S-Corp LLC trust. A lot of people blow that. They don't get it. That's a major, major strategy. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to read these off fast. The 199A. If you guys have pencil and paper handy, go quick. Write these down. These are ones you might want to research. Watch a video of mine. I'm just going to go through 15. Can I do that, Eric? I'll just read them fast. Sure. You there? Did I lose you? No, I'm here. You're still you good. You might be muted. Your camera's a problem. In fact, I'm good. I, I've got, I see comments here. Yeah. Um. Can everybody still hear and see me? Talk to me. Are we good? I I can, yeah. Uh, make a comment if someone can. Rebecca was the last comment I saw. I'm feeling concerned that no one can hear or see me. Uh, da, 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 viewers. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, hello. Yeah, Jessica. Jessica can hear us. We so may have lost our feed. Mark. Okay, I'd keep going here, but we may have lost everybody. Hang tight. 
Hang tight with us, guys, as we're working through it. Okay, everybody. You just Hang lost there. me, so it makes it kind of difficult to have Mark answer questions. So we'll see if he can't go through his top 15 here. Hang on, everyone. There we go. 91 comments. We might be back in, on track. If you guys can hear me, I apologize. I can't hear or see anyone. So I'm trying to see if Eric can make sure we're... Okay. All right. Let's see. Eric, talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. Text me. Let me see if I still Let's got your see. number. Sorry, guys. We're going to get to uh, Mark's Hello. top 15 If you guys here. can hear and see me, I am, in fact, uh, I'm going to, oh, look at, I'm going to look at comments. We can hear you. Okay. I, I just saw that from Helen. Okay. I'm going to keep talking, guys. I'm going to go through this. I cannot hear or see Eric, so we may have lost him. I'm just going to keep rolling. Thank you. Uh, okay. Do the top 15. We're going to go through it. Number one, S Corp versus LLC. Make sure you understand your business and which one to use for what. Um, 199A pass-through. We already talked about it. All of you as real estate professionals should understand it and take advantage of it. Number three, the auto deduction. There's a no particular order, but anyway, auto deduction, we already talked about that. Big year. Should I lease, take actual mileage, or do uh, at least actual or mileage? Those are the three. Rental property, duh. <laughs> but I get to my doctor conferences and I have to, uh, you know, tell my doctors and dentists and everybody buy rentals. I don't need to tell you. Number five, choose the rec or the correct retirement account for maximum tax savings. That would be the difference between a 401k, a SEP, a Roth, or an IRA. I just shot a video that will be going live today. How to build a one million dollar Roth IRA. You'll blow your mind how simple it is. Get over to YouTube. You'll see that by five o'clock today. Six self-directing retirement accounts. Two different strategies. Build your retirement account. Number six is under how to understand how to self-direct, how to take an IRA or 401k and buy real estate. How critical is that? Um, number seven, paying your children, grandchildren, children over age 18 or under age 18 and understanding how to take a deduction for your family members that are helping you in the business. I love this topic. All my kids are on the payroll. Do you know, I text my daughter who's 15 years old. She's going to be here in um, about two hours and her job is to shred paper today. I said, you're shredding paper today for an hour if you want the car this weekend. That's how I, and I'll take a tax write-off for that because I'm going to give her money anyway, but you got to do it in the right way. I do not issue W-2s to kids under age 18 and only 1099s to kids over age 18. Learn that strategy. Number eight, should I pay my spouse? Husband or wife, should I pay them out of my company? Does that make sense? Is there a social security strategy? Is there a 401k strategy? If you want to YouTube that, put Kohler pay spouse. I've got a whole video on that. All of these, I have videos on YouTube to at least give you a little more content. Travel expenses, love the travel write-offs. Wherever you, you should be buying rentals where you travel. I bought a duplex next to my mother-in-law 10 years ago. Still have it. Think I get a write-off for every time I visit my mother-in-law? Hello. All right, number 10 deducting medical insurance properly. Some of you that are full-time entrepreneurs, are you deducting your health insurance properly? Are you using a Christian um, uh, account? Oh, the, um, I can't believe I forgot the name right now. Uh, anyway, but there's all different types of strategy with medical insurance. Number 11, the home office deduction. And the IRS, there's a new case that just came out three years ago where you can have the admin office in your home, even if you have an office across town. So don't let your accountant talk you out of the home office deduction. There's a good one there. Health savings accounts. Health savings accounts are one of the best tax strategies in America, and no one knows it. And guys, this will blow your mind. Do you know I own a rental property in my HSA? The rent pays for health care for my family tax-free. I could sell that rental and pay zero tax and use the money for any health care expense. You can self-direct an HSA. Is that insane? Health reimbursement arrangement. And um, the HRA is a way to write off medical expenses over and above an HSA. And for those of you that have a lot of medical expenses, it could be cancer, dental, eyes, co-pays, prescription drugs, uh, chemotherapy, uh, kidney failure, um, dialysis, whatever. If you've got a lot of medical expenses, we want to write those off in the business. A lot of accountants don't know how. Number 14, meals and entertainment. Woohoo! You got to know the difference when you can write off what and how. And number 15, it's the bonus depreciation, deducting equipment, 
electronics, cellular telephones, cameras, computers, drones. I bought a drone so I could take video of my rental properties from above for insurance purposes and resell. I wrote off my drone. Are you writing off your cameras, video cameras, uh, phones, iPads, laptops, all of your electronics, anything at Best Buy or Apple should be uh, a write-off. Now, Eric, you said you needed my number and I'm just going to throw it out there. I guess I have to, and that's okay verbally. I don't mind. Call me at 435-590-7008. 435-590-7008. Um, if you need to call me, Eric, to patch me in. I can't. I Apparently, you guys can hear me. Uh, and we see, I see plenty of comments and reactions and viewers, but I cannot hear Eric or see him. So, yeah, you can't hear me. Um, right? I will right. share another tip because I don't want to lose time with you guys. The one that I'm going to talk about is just the self directing for a moment. Would you know that we have a client? We have several clients with over $10 million in a Roth IRA. They did it. For a hundred million dollar Roth IRA. Is that insane? I can see you, Eric. Are we? I can see and hear you now. Okay. Uh, FDIC insured. Uh, monitored and approved by the Arizona Banking Commission. We're only one of four or five trust companies in Arizona to help clients self-direct their accounts around the country. We're one of the lowest cost setup. You can set up an HSA, an IRA, a 401k, a dread, traditional IRA, and self-direct it and buy real estate. My partner has the best-selling book on it, the sdirahandbook.com. That's sdirahandbook.com. Bottom line, and I'm going to turn the time back to Eric now, I can see him now, is people... No self-directing. Eric, someone making money. The next time you go to do a real estate deal, don't do it. Let your 401k do it. Let your IRA do it. I even have a strategy called the backdoor 401k, where if you only have rental income, I can backdoor you into a 401k and the 401k can buy your next rental. Guys, that's the way to get rich Fast, tax free is using a Roth to own real estate. Okay. Woo. Come that on, was you can hear me now. We're good. Okay. And now, yeah, Jessica said it's okay. cutting in and out, but I'm here. Can everybody hear me? Jessica, give me another comment here. Are we good now? Eric, you talk. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. We're going to use Jessica as our control uh, group here. If she makes another live comment, testing one, two, three. Feel bad about this. Live video has always been good for both Eric and I. I feel bad, everybody. Okay. All right. We're good. I'm getting tons of yes. All right. Okay. All right. Eric, the time is yours. All right. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Perfect. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, find another one here. Uh, that, 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 uh, it wasn't that 15 fun? <laughs> I'm like sitting here like messaging you all over the place trying to get your phone number all that. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Can I write off a loss repairs due to damage from tenants? Uh, Kim's asking if she can write off a loss repairs due to damage from tenants. Uh, absolutely. So uh, I'll, if folks out there, you have to do a repair on um, a property, that is a deduction. Now, if your insurance pays for it, that's tax-free income and you don't get a write-off because your insurance company paid for it. You've got a deduction for your premiums, then the insurance company comes in and does the repair. And But any out-of-pocket, even the deductible, is a tax deduction. So um, now I will say this, this is important. Losses to damage, theft, or loss on your personal home are no longer a write-off unless the government declares it a national disaster area. That's under the new Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. But if it's a business property, a rental, then you get all the write-offs, Kim, whether it's uh, damage, theft, crap, any out-of-pocket expenses to repair it are a write-off. Okay. Uh, we got a question here that came in. It says, does a rental income from a single-family home qualify for QBI tax break 
if I don't spend more than 250 hour, hours a year on it. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Okay. People, this <laughs> Eaton brings up a very, very complicated question. And I'm going to do my best. Everybody, the decision of being a real estate professional for ordinary income loss versus a passive loss carry forward. And I've talked about it on the show before with Eric. I've got books and videos all over on this, articles even, that writing off those losses on your real estate, being a real estate professional, in the 750 hours and the 500 rules uh, hours and this material participation and the seven rules and all that stuff that we've all known for years has nothing to do with QBI. Let me repeat that. The decisions for having the real estate professional classification for deductibility for losses and income is completely separate from the QBI 20% deduction. It's a whole different set of rules. So Eaton you may have a passive loss carry forward because you're not a real estate professional, but you, if you had a gain, you would still get the 20% pass through deduction because your hour spent has nothing to do with QBI. Rental, property, income gets the 20% deduction. There's no hour requirement. So it's very tricky. Don't blend the two people. Real estate professional, QBI deduction, two different sets of rules. Okay. All right. Let's Ooh, see. Boy, your guys ask hard questions. I feel Some like softballs. All right. Can you read the one on screen here? Ooh, we get an IRA question. I love it. Yeah. Do you want to take a I'll look read. at it? Okay. I currently have a SD IRA. This is good for everybody to understand. I may put my own twist on it. I have a self-directed retirement account and my strategy is to buy single family homes, do minimal rehab, and then sell them on a land contract. All right. Sounds cool. I currently have six properties in my self-directed IRA. Woohoo! And it's receiving these land contract payments. Love it. My question is because I am only doing one or two of these land contracts a year, is this activity considered passive investment or am I running the, an enterprise with my IRA and therefore subject to UBIT tax? That's unrelated business income tax. I am a full time realtor and also own three rentals outside of my self directed IRA. All right, Sam, do you want world peace too? Jeez. <laughs> Darn question here, Sam. You're killing me. All right. Um, due to the amount of activity Sam is having, he is not subject to UBIT. Now, let me put this in perspective. So your answer is no UBIT, Sam, but let me tell everybody why. If I go out and buy a rental property, and I've got a caveat for you, Sam, so don't leave. There's another point to your question you may have not asked, but I've got to mention but everybody out there, if you take a self-directed IRA, HSA, 401k, and go buy a rental property, there's, there's no UBIT. We'll come to UDFI in a moment. There's no UBIT because you're not in the business of flipping properties. You're in the business of holding properties. So Sam here is buying rentals two or three a year, fix them up, sell them, and takes a land contract. His IRA is not an enterprise. His IRA is not a real estate professional, even though Sam is. The test for his IRA is three deals a year. He could be doing 10 deals a year in his personal name, and he's a real estate professional. He's got self-employment tax problems. That's why we use an S-corp for Sam. But on his IRA, his IRA has to meet that test as well, and it doesn't because he's buying rentals and just selling them under a land contract. Two to three a year is fine. But if you have debt, unrelated debt financed income is the sister to UBIT. And so if Sam is got loans on these properties, that means he has leveraged his IRA to buy the property in the first place. So you might have UDFI, Sam. I don't know. Make sure you understand that rule and how it works. I would highly recommend, if you don't have it already, my partner's book, The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. You can get it at sdirahandbook.com. You can get it on Amazon. And he's in his second edition that has two or three chapters now on 401ks that you would love. Read the UBTI, the UBIT tax and the UDFI tax chapter. You want to be very familiar with that. Okay. All right. Uh, we get a question here from Nicole talking about writing off expenses for things brought 
or bought for managing rental properties, computer, trailer, vehicle on taxes. I'm going to let you read the rest because I think I'm hearing myself back and I don't want to throw the audio off for other people. So I'll let you finish it up. Boy, you've had technical problems today. I feel bad for you. I hate it when that happens. More than technical problems. It's just problems in general. <laughs> you you know? Life problems? All right. <laughs> we love you, man. You hang in there. Yeah, All you. right. Nicole, this is good for everybody. Nicole says, can I write off expenses for things I buy for managing rental properties? Freak, yeah. Everybody, oh my gosh, Nicole, and that's a cute picture of your baby. Freak, yes, that's a technical term. You can write off all the, I want you to write off dining, entertainment, well, not entertainment anymore, cell phones, self-service, computers, home office, all those little 15 things I was throwing out there, all that computer, trailer, vehicle, all that's a write-off against your business income. I freaking love it. Then she says, do you book that expense to one of the properties on the Schedule E or expense them somewhere else? If, well, if, if rental properties is your only business, Nicole, let's assume that. Let's say Nicole's got five properties and she's got a Schedule E two pages long, three on one, two on the other. Um, most of your expenses, Nicole, I'm going to divide by five. I'm going to spread them off under each column on your Schedule E. They don't go anywhere else. They don't go on a Schedule C. They don't go anywhere else. They go on your uh, rental properties. And I would, so if you had, let's say $500 a month in cell phone, I would put a hundred dollars a month on each rental property on the schedule E. I would just spread it out and a good accountant will just divide it by the number of properties and then just put them on each property. Your depreciation will vary. Your mortgage interest will vary by property. Property taxes will vary. You know, so there's going to be different things that vary by property, but your management expenses, I would just pro rata right off across the board of over all your properties. Now, some of you that have an LLC with three properties in it, that's still a schedule E on your 1040. So you may have one LLC bank account, but then you got to report it on your schedule E. Uh, your accountant should know what to do, but Nicole, you're, you're on it. I love it. Track it. You got it. All right. We got a question here on screen from Thomas, actually three of them, uh, going back into land trusts and questions on that. If you want to check that out, Mark. Percentage of land trust compared to a living will, is it easy to get a loan if under a land trust? Is there any problem with the lender or property still have mortgage balance to transfer to land trust? Okay. Leave the question up there so I can get all three. Yep. Okay. Thomas says, what is the advantage of a land trust compared to a living will? None, none. Can I repeat this for everybody? Zero. Okay, uh, the, the advantage of a land trust is so I might be able to do a subject to deal, avoid the due on sale clause if I'm going to sell the property and play games with the bank, uh, and I might want some privacy. That's it. That's all a land trust does. That's it, people. I don't know why everybody gets so hopped up on land trust. Do you know what? The chapter of my book is titled Land Trust, Savior or Snake Oil. The result, the decision, snake oil. People, I now if you want a land trust, I'll sell you one. We charge 400 bucks. Here it is. Take it. Have fun with it. There are, I don't even use land trusts and I'm a lawyer for my own properties. Now for privacy, I'll use I'll use a type of land trust, but I, okay. Now a living will, a living will, and bless Thomas's heart. I know what he means is a standard will. Here's who gets what when I die. Here's who's gonna raise my kids, who's gonna take care of my dog. That's a will. That's a standard will. Now we're going to have a revocable living trust tied to it. So if I had to take Thomas's question, I would say, what's the difference between a land trust, a living will, a will, and a living trust? Those are four different things. A living will is pull the plug if I'm a vegetable. And I know, Thomas, that's not what you meant, but that's what a living will is. It's a healthcare directive that says, pull the plug. If any of you can't find the heart to pull the plug that you're when you die because you're on a vegetable, just ask your ex-wife or ex-husband. They'll come in and pull the plug. It's, a, it's, it's standard provision. It's very common. Now, that was a joke, Eric. I hope you liked that. I did. I laughed. I'm just not did on the screen. <laughs> on the inside. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, <laughs> okay, everybody. So right. a living will pull the plug. A will goes with a living trust. And that's part of your estate plan. A land trust is for privacy. Okay, number two, he says, is it easy to get a loan if your property is under a land trust? No, 
It's not easy to get a, you guys know this, you go into a banker and you talk to the 19 year old across from the desk that just got their job a month ago. And you're like, I need a loan. They're going to look at you like you're insane when they see that your trust is on title to your property, right? Or heaven forbid, an LLC. Where are you from Mars? What's an LLC? I'm a banker, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, blah, 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 right? Drives you insane. Sorry for those bankers on the line. It's not your fault. It's Wall Street. But here's the deal. You're going to have to put property into your own name to go get a refi or go buy a property. And then on day two, you deed it over your, to your LLC. Now, if you want a land trust for privacy, maybe, and then to have your land trust owned or the beneficiary of your land trust is your LLC. You always have an LLC in the mix, even if you have a freaking land trust for some reason. I wasn't going to swear. It's PG show. So here, so here's the point. Um, Bankers, tell them what they want to hear, deed the property or the LLC. In 20 years, I have never, ever, ever had a client pay on the due on sale clause because they moved the property to their LLC after closing. Now, sometimes the bank asks questions or they get a little pissy, and that's if you walk in and ask them for permission. Darn it, don't do it. Just deed the property or LLC and you're fine. We do almost a thousand deeds a year and have no problems. Final, is any problem with lender a proper, is there any problem with a lender if a property is still has a mortgage balance to transfer to a land trust? No, same point. You can transfer a property to a land trust. You can transfer a property to your living trust. You can tra transfer a property to a LLC. The, just no, they're not going to call the mortgage due. You're fine. It's called the due on sale clause. You're fine. Now, if you try and sell the property and the bank figures out you really sold it and you were just trying to hide the process, yeah, they're going to call the mortgage due, but you can transfer to your own freaking trust, your own LLC, and you'll be fine. Man, I, I didn't even, I didn't drink even any Mountain Dew, Eric. I'm sorry. I'm like going ballistic here. I got to bring it down a notch. Well, I got another question that <laughs> might get you ramped up again. But before we get to that, a reminder, Woo! if anyone didn't see it before, uh, throw a little heart emoji, whatever you want to call it. Click the heart icon on this video. Mark's going to be giving away three of his books for free and mail them out to you. Yes. There's a drawing, people, but I need a heart. Give me the Justin Bieber heart right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this question comes from Joe going back to talking about trust versus LLCs. I know we're kind of really hammering that point, but it's kind of okay. Hot. So I want to uh, address it here. So I'll let you read this one in case my audio is feeding back. Yeah, man, your audio is starting to sound jacked up. Yeah. I own 28 properties and, and growing. Great job, Joe. And have them in, all in a trust. Okay. I have never got a straight answer as to which was better, a trust or an LLC. You're going to get the straight answer right now, Joe. I, you're going to love this. It seems like a lot of extra work and money to put each in an LLC. I do agree with that. I wouldn't do that and do a tax return each year for every property. Hell no, you're not going to do that either. So you're going to get a, oh, put it back up. And Joe, right. you're going to get a straight answer here. You're going to love it. And then he says, what extra benefit would I get from an LLC over a trust? Okay. You guys are going to love this, everybody. And I will not rant and rave. I will not yell at you. Joe, here's your answer. You're going to do both. Okay. This is the trifecta that I was talking about is my number one tax strategy concept. You're going to have a family trust at the bottom. I have a family trust. I could show it to you right here on the screen. Okay, you can take that off. Eric, I'm going to have a family trust at the bottom, and I'm going to have it own my LLCs that I have my properties in. So you use both. The purpose of the trust is privacy, estate planning. What happens to your spouse, your kids with all that money that you're building up? I don't want to have another, you know, Lindsay Lohan running around at age 18 because you didn't have a trust. You're going to have a trust. I'm going to design you a trust and it's going to own everything. One trust at the bottom. Then we're going to decide how many LLCs you need. If you've got 28 properties, maybe we put six properties in each LLC, maybe seven, eight, nine. We're going to take five or six LLCs and put five properties in each bucket. So that way we don't overdo it, but we get separation. All your eggs are in one basket. A trust does not give you any asset protection. Joe, you could get into one lawsuit on one property. And if I was the lawyer on the other side, we'd go out all the other 27. That's how ugly it is. Now, am I going to set up 28 freaking LLCs? No. Four or five, let's put our eggs in different baskets. 
The LLCs are going to give you asset protection, but guess who's going to own the LLCs? Your trust. Do you have an extra tax return? No, no extra tax return. You can still put them all on your 1040 Schedule E. Do I have extra banking? Yeah, you'll have five bank accounts for 28 properties. You're going to have five different company names, and you're going to start getting the lease agreements transferred to each proper company name. You're going to do your company maintenance, but your asset protection is going to go off the chart. You're going to have amazing asset protection with your eggs in five different baskets. You're going to look at a commercial umbrella policy for all 28, and you're going to have one trust at the bottom. Joe, I have researched this. I've read every case in the country on this. I've written the best-selling book on the asset protection for this. I will stand behind it all day long. And do you know what I charge for the first LLC? 800 bucks. You get an hour with me and every other LLC is half off. That's it. Company maintenance, 150 bucks. No, yeah, 150 bucks per LLC per year. That's it. Still do your taxes the same darn way, but your asset protection goes up by 20 fold. So it's very affordable. It's not the end of the world. And that, my friend, is the straight answer for everybody out there. Straight fire from Mark Kohler. Dropping the pen. <laughs> I feel like that's how we should just go out on this today because that was a good note. But before hey, we do that, first I want questions. to thank you for your time. Oh, of course. No. Uh, I know everybody loves having you on when we have you on oh. here. Uh, but we got to do or you got a question. Colleen, we got to take her question. Can we do that? And, yeah, and I, can we do Colleen and Jessica, please, please, please? Yep. Let me see if I can uh, find it. I can read them. I can read them. I see them right now. Yep. Okay. Colleen, Colleen first. Yeah. Colleen Gray says, I, and then Jessica Misa right below it. Colleen says, I have an LP owning LLCs. This is to provide asset protection. Does a trust do the same? No, you already know that. I'm not going to rant and rave about trusts again. Trusts give you no asset protection. They're estate planning. And darn it, Colleen, you better have a trust, a revocable living trust at the bottom. I'll tell you how you, we work with our tax lawyers if you want to give us a shot. I'll tell you at the end. Um, but here's the thing. Be very, very careful of a limited partnership, Colleen. I would never put you in that situation. And you may say, Mark, limited partnerships are great asset protection. They are. But if you don't get ordinary income loss deducting deductions with a limited partnership. So if you or your spouse are a real estate professional and you're like, oh, I get all these losses as a write-off, not with an LP. I would recommend you take and put in a Wyoming LLC as the owner of your LLCs, you get the same asset protection or better than an LP and you get all the tax benefits to boot. I only use limited partnerships for a cabin, a ranch, a beast, a, be a beach house, or a farm. That's it. I never use a limited partnership for rentals because it bites you in the butt for taxes. Get us, get a consult. Um, okay. And then the other question was series LLCs. And I think, um, Jessica, on screen. Actually, okay. Right. Jessica said, any experience with series LLCs? I'm in Texas. Hell yeah. I have a whole <laughs> appendice in my book that tells you which states allow for series LLCs, how they operate. I have a whole chapter on them. I love them. So everybody out here, and Joe, this is good for you. Joe's like, well, I don't want 28 different LLCs. So we maybe do five. Well, if Joe's properties are in an, a series LLC, state like Texas, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Utah, all these, and there's 15 states that are series states, approximately, it's 13 to 15. You can have a one parent LLC and a bunch of baby subs. In Illinois, you have to pay $50 to get the new sub. In Texas, there's another filing for each sub. I think it's around $50. Susan, my paralegal, could tell you. But anyway, series LLCs are the way to go. So Joe, I would amend my comment to yours and say, if you're in a series state, then we're going to throw a series LLC on top of the mix, which is even better. So it this is why you need a console. And I'm going to finish with this. And then we'll, I'm, Eric, the time is yours to wrap it up or do whatever. I'll keep, I'm having fun. But here's the thing, guys, if your accountant or lawyer is not talking like me, they're not hitting these points. Give us a shot. Get a different one. Don't even use me if you don't like me, but get rid of your freaking 
advisor, if they're not talking with this intensity and this amount of knowledge, they, they're out there. I'm not the only guy in the country, but I'm here in front of you now. Here's the deal. I got five attorneys in my office. If you do a consult, you're going to pay anywhere from three to 500 bucks in one hour. We'll build a diagram. We'll give you all the recommendations tailored to you that crap that I'm talking about now. I'll look at your tax return in one hour. If I don't save you 10 or 20 times that, I screwed up. I failed. I never have a client ask for a refund. They're always blown away going, oh my gosh, I got the straight answers I needed, just like Joe was looking for. Then if you need us to set up an entity, we'll give you a price. You need us to set up your trust, we'll give you a price and we'll tell her it. We'll be there on the backside. We'll make it affordable and we'll provide annual maintenance that's affordable, simple, and straightforward. That's the type of tax lawyer you're firm you need. Use my newsletter, use my videos to shop and find the person you like. You may hate me. That's cool. But my information's out there and I stand behind it. There you go, Eric. All right. <laughs> One more because she was nice about it. She said, do those LLCs have to be in the same state as the property? Yes. And Jessica, this goes to your, or no, no. Who was it before Jessica that had the LP? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Here's the question. I'm going to repeat it. Oh, Mark. Sorry, this is the question they really wanted to ask. Oh, Mark, I hear Nevada is great or Wyoming or I live in California and I don't want a California LLC. And so I'm going to do Delaware or Nevada or New Mexico or Wyoming because that's they're the best asset protection. Yes. If your property is there. Now, I may have a holding company like what's her name was doing an LP. Uh we're going to do a holding company like a Wyoming or um, New Mexico or Utah. They're fantastic for asset protection. But your LLCs for your properties, here's the answer. Your LLC has to be either set up in the state where your rental is or at least registered there. So if I have rentals in Tennessee, then I need a Tennessee LLC. If I have rentals in Texas, I have to have a Texas LLC. Now, if I want a Texas LLC, that owns Texas and Tennessee, then I can register it foreign in Tennessee. So I can have one limited liability company registered in two or three states. So I have separate eggs in separate states all in one basket, but I have to register the LLC to do business in those states. So bottom line, I start my clients out easy. You got a Tennessee property, you got an Arizona property, you got a Utah property. We'll have one LLC registered in three states. Let's get started. Oh, now you have 15 properties. Maybe we'll have an Arizona LLC, a Tennessee LLC, and a Utah LLC for your three buckets. Oh, you've got 28 properties. You need better asset protection. I set up a Wyoming LLC to own all your LLCs. Now I double down on massive asset protection, but I'm freaking, where's my land trust? See, did you notice? I What the hell? You want to hide? Fine. Do a land trust. I don't care. So we got some good questions coming in here because you're doing a great job. And uh, Chad says, how do we contact you? Oh, Chad, Chad, everybody, the easiest way to get started with me, um, I'll give you a couple options is markjkohler.com. That's my website, markjkohler.com. When you sign up for the newsletter, you can click a button that says, I want a consult. You'll have a call from a legal assistant within a day or two. You can call our main number, 435-586-586. 9366-435-586-9366 and uh, uh, talk to any of the legal assistants. They'll um, set you up a consult with one of the attorneys, do a strategy session, and then go from there. At least you're getting a second opinion. Uh, we're going to be out a week or two at most. We're a little busy this time of year with tax season. And we have offices in Phoenix, California, uh, Utah, and Idaho. We help clients all over the country. My phone calls yesterday were Florida, Illinois, and Hawaii. I don't care where you're at. We have more clients around the country than anywhere. We can do all 50 states and just give us a shot. And this is not an infomercial. I'm just here for you guys to get the right person and they better be talking like I'm talking. Get out and shop. I've got some competitors. If you don't like me, I'll give them to you. Not now, but other times. <laughs> uh, last question. Uh, this came from Helen. She was asking if this is recorded. Yes, it is. She said she's new to the industry and not fast absorbing all the information. Uh, I'll be honest, a lot of stuff Mark says passing me by. That's why I subscribe to his YouTube channel. <laughs> and there's so much to absorb. But what book would you recommend for Helen based on that question? Uh, okay, stay here. Stay here. <laughs> this is full service for you, Helen. We're going to get you a free book and then we're going to do it. Is. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, Helen, Helen, here it is. This is my tax and legal playbook. Now, the second edition comes out in two months. You can get it for 12 bucks on Amazon right now, if you have Prime. Tax and legal playbook, 28 game-changing strategies. Each chapter you can read independently, little, uh, little case study, example stories, diagrams. Very helpful. I, I would start maybe there. I've got the what your CPA isn't telling you, which is a story. It's wonderful. This is the heavy duty book, Business Owner's Guide to Financial Freedom. Those that have a lot of properties are making money. You're going to love that. Then my eight step guide to grow your business. Very helpful. But like Eric said, just start drinking a little of my Kool-Aid. Get to YouTube. Ch check out. I've got probably 70 videos there. My news. I've got a podcast called Refresh Your Wealth Podcast. Refresh your wealth on Stitcher and iTunes. Type Kohler or Refresh. You'll get it. We do a show every week. Um, but thank you, Helen. Just it, it's a lot. Oh, 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 and finally, finally, I do workshops every year. I'm in my ninth year. In the fall, I'm doing five cities, 200 bucks, and I throw in lunch. Philadelphia, Chicago, Orange County, Seattle. And then I, I have to, I got to go to Honolulu. So I do Honolulu and it, yeah, it's a tax write off to come. I do it for you. Uh, I don't do, I mean, I don't want to go, but I do it for you. <laughs> I'm just joking. Of course I want to go. I love Hawaii. And here's the deal. I do a luau. It's the Saturday before Thanksgiving week and come on out and it's 200 bucks and the luau and tax strategies all day. It sells out every year. It's like 70 people. It's not like a thousand people, but Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, It's you can get to it on my site, markjkohler.com. Come out for a day, 200 bucks, lunch. And I have an early bird for 150. So just check it out. Well, Mark, which book do you recommend giving her? Because she did love the video. So I think she's the first giveaway. Oh, uh, you're going to give her this one? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to throw it because I'm waiting for the Whatever second Whatever you want. One. This is in my office. This is right off my shelf. Okay, Helen, this one's yours. Eric's giving that to you. That's that's okay. big. I give it, I'm giving it to you. He's not even paying me. What the hell, <laughs> Eric? I want some money. Give me I bucks. offered. Mark's a good guy, though. <laughs> Helen, hit good. me up. Private private message me. I'll facilitate that. Okay. Uh, and then, Mark, we have. It looks like I want to make sure I got updated numbers here. How many love icons we got in this video? I don't know why I hadn't said that weird. Oh, okay. Pooja said, you mentioned five strategies to save taxes, which are more for business income. I have a salary W-2. What do I do? Well, th th okay. Th this Pooja, this is the point for everybody listening here. If you want to plug your W-2 into your 1040, write off some charity, your home uh, interest, kid, you're screwed. There's nothing I can do to save you taxes. That's why one of my strategies is to buy one rental property a year. Now you've got a business. Now I can write off your cell phone, your auto, your home office, your laptop, your computer. Now we're talking. People, the way to build wealth and the way to get tax write-offs is to have a small business on the side. I never said quit your day job. But if you're buying rentals, if you're a client of rent prep, then you're buying freaking rentals. Eric's taking care of you. I'm taking care of you. Build wealth, build cash flow. That's the way to save taxes. I love it. <laughs> you know what? I feel like the feelings mutual, Colleen. We love you. You know, you just, I feel like we got five hours of content in an hour here. It's so great. So, uh, we have 26 hard icons. Give me two numbers between one and 26, and I will do the follow up after this video. Okay, me? Uh, yeah. Two numbers. Between yep. one and 26. Yep. Uh, seven, because I go to Vegas. Lucky number seven. Uh, that is actually Patricia, uh, who is, uh, she had some comments and questions. I'm going to follow up with her, but Patricia just won a book. And okay. what's another Patricia, one? We're going to give you what your CPA isn't telling you. Okay. Right. Next one is uh, 16, because I loved it when I could drive a car. Who's number 16? Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 16 is Darian DeCosta. Arian, I'm going to give you yep. this, the business owner's guide to financial freedom. And then let's go with the last one on your list. Who's the last one? They made it on the show today. We're going to give it to him. Who'd made it? I'm going to refresh it because we just got a bunch of hard icons that came through. So whatever it refreshes that, let's see. I'm scrolling down. Refresh the last hard. Chad M. Smith. Is Chad? What I have. 
Chad, you get the eight steps to grow and your build your business with 70 different videos and podcasts and webinars. And if anybody wants the eight steps, you can get it on Amazon or my website. It's phenomenal. Give it to your kids. Eight steps to start a business. My kids have to go through this. I've got four kids, three in college. Love it. All so, right. Last question. Uh, we did have somebody asking about if a tenant destroys their property, is there anything they can do from a tax and legal way when they head out? How does that work? I know it's kind of generic, but. Well, no, no. I mean, I own rental properties, guys. I do. I own rentals myself. I've had a bad tenant. We all do. And it's okay. It doesn't mean rental property is bad. We just got to deal with it. A lot of, you know, bad comes with the good. You know, the rain comes with the sunshine. Um, any out-of-pocket expenses to fix the property are an immediate write-off. The reason why is repairs are a write-off. Improvements are not. They're, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry repairs are an immediate write-off in the year you incur them. Improvements have to be depreciated unless we do use bonus depreciation. So um, anyway, repairs are always a write-off immediately in the year you incur them. Even if you put it on a credit card, it's a write-off right now. So always, anybody that trashes your property, any out-of-pocket is going to be an immediate expense a repair. Improvements are going to be depreciated or you bonus depreciate amount. Okay. Perfect. All right. I think that about does it. You got anything else? Um, I just want to say, everybody, I'm not kidding. I know I sound like a cheese ball, but I'm going to share an emotional point. Um, I'm taking care of my mom now. She was just um, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Gosh, I got a little emotion there. Um, she doesn't live on Social Security. If she had to, we couldn't do it. My dad bought rental properties. And he was a microbiologist, but on the side, he bought rentals. She lives on the rent of three commercial buildings. She's not uber rich, but that, that cash flow is what my mom is living on and will pay for her assisted living. We're moving her into a home in the next year. Sorry, I got choked up. Rental property is what you're going to retire on, not social security. Now, do I want you to have a 401k and an IRA? Sure. Guess what it's going to own? Rental property. You're going to self-direct. Guys, it's legit. It's real. Eric's for real. Contribute, participate, be involved. Don't go away. Keep soaking it up. Brenda, I know this was a lot to soak up. Just keep learning. You don't learn this in college. You don't learn this in school. It's going to take years to be get, get good at this. I'm still getting good at it. Take your time. Don't feel overwhelmed. That's Mark Kohler. I'm out. Boom. <laughs> Third pen drop of the video. Mark, thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. So Thanks for having me. Until next time. All right, everybody. Give it a big thumbs up on the way out. Let Mark know you appreciate him. Check out his website. Great resources. Hit him up.